Putnam defeated Republican incumbent Jerry Ralph by about 300 votes in the recent contest to represent Senate District 14, which includes St. Cloud and portions of Benton, Sherburn, and Stearns counties. I spoke with Senator-elect Putnam this week, and I began by asking him what that narrow margin tells him about the district he will represent. Thanks again for, for having me here. I really appreciate it. Um, and that's a good question. You know, uh, we did when we won by 316 votes, and that doesn't sound like a lot. Um, but in context, it's twice the number uh, of, of votes that were in the margin in 2016. Um, so there's, I think, a general assumption that, that St. Cloud is a place where close elections occur. But what I think is, is probably more true is that uh, the closeness of our margin is actually more a reflection of 2020 and the weirdness of campaigning and COVID than it is of St. Cloud in particular. Uh, if you look at the 3,000 votes that went to a third party candidate uh, behind a, an issue that I support, uh, if you look at the uh, number of uh, college students who weren't living at St. Cloud State and didn't vote there this year, uh, when you put in all those factors, uh, and in, include also that my opponent door knocked and I did not um, out of uh, respect for public health, um, I think in a normal year, uh, this would have been a pretty substantial margin because I believe that I reflect the values of my community and St. Cloud was ready for change. You ran for the House twice in 2016 and also in 2018, and those efforts uh, did not lead to election. This is the third time, perhaps the charm then for you, but now in the Senate, you've run for the Senate as opposed to the House. Why make the change? Well, I, th I think that, uh, first off, I'm in pretty good company because uh, my pals, uh, Melissa Hortman and Dan Wolgamont, both uh, had to run twice before they won their third time around. And I don't think that's all that uncommon because this is kind of a hard thing to do. And it takes uh, some effort and some time to kind of learn how to do it properly. Um, also in 2016, when I ran for the House, uh, I'd never been involved in electoral politics. I never knocked a door until I knocked one for myself, which is not something I'm especially proud of. And we didn't start running until almost July. Uh, so that was a very quick election. Um, and uh, in 2018, we decided to do it again. I was very proud of how we did. But I think if you ask any politician, the only answer for why did you run for office is I wanted to do the most good for the most people. Uh, and for me, that opportunity was in running for the Senate this time around. Now, you are a professor of communications at the College of St. Benedict, St. John's University up in Collegeville, and you have expertise in the history of public arguments about race, colonialism, and political culture. Does this area of study provide any insight into the divisiveness of our current political climate? Yeah, I think it's super important. And, and the, the way you phrase that makes me sound like a complete egghead and a dork, which is probably not completely inaccurate. But in the simplest sense, what I actually do is study um, uh, how language creates boundaries between people. Uh, I'm a rhetorician, so some people who study what I do will study you know, speeches by presidents, but that always bored me. I was always much more interested in this idea of how does language create, uh, create a, an us and a them, uh, this community or that community. Um, and that is really compelling to me. And I think that in our era of divisiveness, that understanding how flexible the boundaries can be between people and communities is really important. Um, and that's a big part of what I do. Um, but you know, in terms of my subspecialty, I, I do have an interest in justice and in making things better for people. And I think if you look with an unjaundiced eye at Minnesota and you see some of the discrepancies and opportunities that people have, there has to be a greater investment in questions of justice, not just for one population or for the other, but for everybody, because we are all suffering when we don't have opportunity. Do you think that rhetorical understanding that you have will aid in reaching across the aisle or working with others who disagree with you? I do, you know, and also in my background as an academic, I'm a, I'm a really curious person. I'm always going to be listening to people as much as possible and not to gain advantage, but to understand their point of view and their perspective. And I think that's something that's lacking in politics a lot lately, is this idea that the boundaries between us can be flexible. You know, my um, great, great, great grandfather founded the Republican Party a million years ago. But parties are just like other senses of community in that they're flexible and dynamic and they change over time and relative to circumstances. And that's what I, something I study as a rhetorician that I think is important in understanding how people get along as they legislate as well. Now, many like to think of academics in the ivory tower as those who, you know, just live in this lofty world and, and don't bother to deal with the daily ins and outs of life. And yet you are leaving at least part-time to come down to the Capitol now 
and dig into the real down and dirty work of lawmaking. Why, what prompted that decision? Yeah, well, so um, I'm a scholar, but I'm primarily a teacher. I, I think of myself as a teacher, that's my vocation. And I think that teachers are by their very nature people who have to be optimistic, have to be hopeful. They have to, to think that by their hard work, they can make things better. Um, and uh, I also think that as a rhetorician, I'm someone who, uh, that my discipline, uh, there's a, a long history of people who have been scholars and activists at the same time and legislators. So um, Cicero is arguably one of the most important um, philosophers of language and politics ever. And he was a senator uh, in Rome. So uh, it's kind of sort of what we do. Uh, in some ways. Uh, and so to me, it's a logical extension of what I've done. And I do intend to stay uh, teaching for as long as I can while I'm a legislator too, because I think it's good to have a foot in each of those environments uh, to keep uh, the relationship between schools and the legislature as, as um, uh, uh, strong as possible. Uh, and I think my students will benefit from me being a legislator. And I think the legislature will benefit from me being a teacher. On your campaign website, you wrote that, quote, our elected officials are often obstacles to progress rather than true representatives of our values. Later or elsewhere, you referred to, quote, selfish politicians who make government worse by manipulating the system. What do you mean and how do you believe that you will be different? You know, I think if you ask anyone uh, in Minnesota or even around the whole country about politics, one of the first things they're going to say is, ew. You know, I, it, too often, I think nowadays, we have this deep, deep cynicism about politics. But I say too often, but I completely understand it and think it's by and large fairly justified. When you see the mailers that come out, the advertisements that come out, these are things that are built to disfranchise people by making them disgusted by politics. Um, we have always run a different kind of campaign and I'm a different kind of dude. Um, uh, in our elections in the past, uh, uh, this time around, uh, before COVID, once a month, our entire campaign team took a day off and we volunteered in the community. Uh, we built a house for Habitat. We uh, wrapped presents for the Humane Society at, uh, at the mall. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing work like that because public service is service at its nature. Um, and I think that once we bring that back to being a political figure, put the service back in, in public service, we will have a chance to kind of chip away at some of that cynicism that's corrupting our uh, political environment right now. And, and ultimately, I think, um, you know, I said I don't really like speeches by presidents, but to me, the best blueprint for citizenship is George Washington's farewell address. And he says two things that are very important to me. And one is, um, you should not be just a function of your party. Partisanship is, is not useful. Um, and two, that being a legislator or a politician is not a career. Your fundamental job is to empower other people to want to do it and then get out of the way. Um, and I take those two concepts, this notion of service and politics as empowerment, very deeply. Uh, and that's part of why I'm doing it, and it's how I'm going to do it, too. Senator-elect Eric Putnam, I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you.